Okay, so I'm going to introduce our next speaker. And she Roy Zak is a solicitor with Duncan Lewis Public Law, and he has been working with us to develop um, a, a legal challenges to the, the, the system in the short, what is now a short term holding facility in, in Yarlswood. And um, he's going to talk more on the, um, the, the possibility for legal challenges. So go ahead, Chiroy. Thank you very much, Karen. I mean, firstly, it's an honour to be on this panel, and I'm not quite sure how to follow up on what we've already heard, but I'll, I'll certainly do my best. <laughs> As, as, Karen, as Karen says, I'm a solicitor within the Public Law Department at Duncan Lewis, and today I'm primarily going to focus on the basis of a challenge that we're pursuing alongside Movement for Justice, which targets the Yarsworth short-term holding facility and the direct impediment to legal representation within it. Rehab, could you translate? Yes. Thank you. Sure. Uh, uh, Abdelaziz or Mohammed. Uh, شيروي طبعا واحد من محامين شركة دانكل لويس واحدة من شركات الهجرة المعروفة وهو يعني سعيد جدا بأنه يكون معنا اليوم وحيحاول أنه يتكلم عن كيف محامين الهجرة بالنسبة يعني في تخصصه كيف بيحاولوا أنه يتحدوا النظام There are a number of other cases that we're pursuing in order to try and ensure that the dignity of channel migrants is preserved at all stages of the process. But given, given the time constraints today, I think it's probably best to delve into this particular case, but do so in some detail. Rehab? Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I was talking. في شيروي وضح إنه في طرق معينة وخطوات معينة بيتبعوها من يعني عشان يقدروا يدعموا أي طالب لجوء عبر القناة عشان يوصل لأرض آمنة. Now it's it's no secret that the Home Office's primary objective is to ensure that channel migrants are swiftly returned from the moment that they are encountered. واضح جدا انه وزارة الداخلية هدفها من اللحظة الأولى لوصول أي طالب لجوء انه لازم يترحل في نفس اللحظة. And the best way for the Home Office to ensure that that happens is by deliberately impeding access to effective legal representation. وطبعا يعني أكثر طريق فعال بالنسبة لوزارة الداخلية عشان تسهل موضوع الترحيل انه طالبي اللجوء ما يلقوا الفرصة انه يتحصلوا على أي استشارات قانونية. In addition, part of the legal problem in this case is that the Home Office does not tell individuals who are in detention that the intention is to remove them as quickly as possible. When we then consider the asylum screening interviews that take place within Yarlswood, it becomes clear that a number of vital questions are deliberately not asked and they are marked as such. Now, given that the Home Office is not eliciting relevant information from individuals who are detained, our argument is that the importance of legal representation at the outset of the process is heightened. عشان كده هم يعني استنتجوا المحامين الهجرة زي شيروي استنتجوا إنه بما إنه وزارة الداخلية حتى إن ما بتديكم الحق إنه تسألكم الأسئلة اللي بتديكم الفرصة عشان تتكلموا عن قضياتكم وعن تفاصيل مهمة فدي واحدة من النقاط المهمة اللي هم حيستخدموها عشان يواشهوا وزارة الداخلية Now moving on to the primary bits of evidence and as Karen says a lot of this evidence has only come about because individuals who were detained within Yarswood were brave enough to speak out against what happened. So I have to thank everyone who has done that because it will, it will pave the way for those that come after them. 
بيشكركم جدا انت وزملائك انكم انتم تكلمتوا وقدمتوا ادله مهمه جدا جدا تقدر يعني يقدروا هم يعتمدوا عليها ويستخدموها لمساعدتكم ومساعده الناس اللي هم حيجوا بعدكم شكرا لك Thank you. The movement, the movement for justice report on the short-term holding facility confirms that none of the individuals held there, aside from one individual who happened to speak English, were aware of their right to legal representation. واضح إنه طبعاً من كل الأدلة اللي تحصلنا عليها عن طريق ال الكلام معكم إنه وزارة الداخلية عارفة إنه ما في أي شخص حجز هناك ما بيتكلم اللغة الإنجليزية عنده معرفة بحقوقه فهم يعني already اشتغلوا في في نقطة إنه ما في حد يعرف حقوقه ما عاد شخص واحد يعني بيعرف يتكلم اللغة الإنجليزية. And what's most concerning is none of the individuals that Movement for Justice interviewed were aware that there were in fact legal aid lawyers present every day via telephone who were able to give those individuals legal advice and representation. وطبعا يعني كويس إنه ده قاد لانه في مجموعه من المحامين محامين الهجره قدروا انه يتواصلوا مع عدد من طالبين اللجوء ويقدموا لهم نصائح قانونيه. Now, and it, Her Majesty's Inspectorate of Prisons, a body designated to inspecting detention facilities, has re released a report on the Yarswood short term holding facility yesterday. Sorry, sorry, can you repeat that again? Sorry, yes. Um, there's a, an inspectorate body has released a report on the Yarlswood facility, and that came out yesterday. Okay. A few واحد من ال مركز ال ال البحوث قدر إنه يكتب تقرير كامل عن كل ال ال الأشياء الموجودة في Yarlswood وهل هل ال المرافق الموجودة هل هي مرافق كافية؟ للناس الموجودين هناك ولا لا والتقرير ده نشر الامس and crucially that report says exactly what the movement for justice report says and goes one step further and states that detention surgeries must be offered within the short term holding facility now the perverse thing is we know they are offered but nobody nobody is told about them والحاجة الكويسة إنه التقرير ده يعني أثبت نفس الكلام اللي هو حركة العدالة موفمنت فور جاستس حاولت إنه يعني توعي الناس وفي نفس الوقت برضو بالإضافة للكلام ده إنه في فعلا مرفق بتاع استشارات قانونية داخل مركز الحجز وللأسف الشديد الحاجة اللي هي الموجعة إنه وزارة الداخلية ما حاولت إنه تخبر أي طالب لجوء بإنه في مركز للاستشارات القانونية داخل مركز الحجز. Very very briefly moving on to the law, Yarswood as a short term holding facility is governed by what's known as the short term holding facility rules. بالنسبة ل اللي هو الناحية الفنية من هم يعني مركز الحجز يارسوت هم عبارة عن واحدة من المنظمات اللي هي مربوطة بالحكومة البريطانية. And the rules are quite clear. They say that information about applying for bail, the right to seek legal advice, the procedures in the short-term holding facility must be explained in a language. That the detained person understands, where they appear to have difficulty understanding that information. وطبعا يعني في already إرشادات واضحة إنه ضروري أي مركز حجز لطالبي اللجوء يكون من من واجباتهم إنه يشرحوا لطالب اللجوء كل الطريقة طريقة اللجوء وكيف إنه هم ممكن يستمروا في 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 طلب لجوءهم من غير أي صعوبات. We know from what Abdulaziz said about 10 minutes ago that that simply isn't happening, i.e. the Home Office is operating in breach of statute. واضح جدا طبعا من اللي هي الأدلة اللي انت قدمت علينا عبد العزيز والمعلومات اللي قدمت علينا انه الكلام ده ما حصل وانه للأسف الشديد وزارة الداخلية بتمارس انتهاكات. Now, without going into the details of this case too much, the individual that we represent and the individual who's pursuing these arguments 
is on the face of his case a victim of trafficking. واضح جدا طبعا انه اغلب ال ال ممثل ال طالبين اللجوء اللي بنمثلهم هم ضحايا لل للتعذيب ولل للانتهاكات انتهاكات حقوق الانسان في بلدهم. He only has a lawyer now due to the actions of movement for justice, and that cannot be the way this system works. وطبعا انت عارف اذا يعني اذا ما كان قدرت تتواصل مع حركه العداله ما ما كان حيكون عندك محامي. صح. وللاسف الشديد يعني دي ما الطريقه الصحيحه. He agree. The Home Secretary cannot complain about last minute legal claims. When she is deliberately impeding effective access to legal representation at the earliest possible opportunity, her practice, in fact, encourages last-minute claims and leaves individuals with no option. Ah, and of course, because the Department of Justice, I mean, it's not possible to try to prove that the applicants are trying to get access to the legal process at the last minute, and that's why they can't do it. يمشوا طلب لجوءهم لانه للاسف هم اللي بيخلوا طالب اللجوء ما قادر يلقى من البدايه اي اي منفذ قانوني. And we're also somewhat concerned that there may have been individuals who have been removed directly from other short term holding facilities and we have asked the Home Office for disclosure in that regard. للاسف الشديد طبعا في كميه من طالبين اللجوء قدر قدرت وزاره الداخليه ترحلهم مباشره من غير اي اختار لاي جهه ثانيه واحنا حاليا بنطالب وزاره الداخليه ان تعطينا تفسير. I'm conscious that I've been going for 10 minutes so I'm going to wrap this up but ultimately we want the dignity of those who are detained to be preserved as best as it can given that they're being deprived of their liberty. They need to be told where they are, how long for, why they are there. How they can claim asylum, and who's there to help them, and that can only be done with a lawyer in circumstances where the Home Office is doing absolutely nothing. عشان كده إحنا هدفنا الأساسي إنه نتحصل على حقوق طالب اللجوء ونسبة إنه من البداية عندهم الحق إنه يعرفوا إنه هم وين بالضبط وكيف يقدموا على لجوء وكيف يقدروا يدعموا قضيتهم وكيف إنه يقدروا يعيشوا بشكل سليم مش يكونوا معزولين عن المجتمع. And put simply, as as Prosy and Abdulaziz say, this dehumanization of foreign suffering has to end. وفعلا كلامك صحيح يا عبد العزيز ضروري الانتهاكات حقوق الإنسان اللي حصلت معكم تنتهي تماما. Once again, thank you all for having me. Cheers. شكرا لكم. Thank you, thank you so much, Shiroy, and thanks for all your work on this. The the these um cases that that challenge the system are so important. and are an important part of, of building a movement that, that can win.